we thought we'd take a few moments to sit down and talk about apprenticeships. Now, this is a very serious, important matter, so Gary's put his glasses on. Absolutely, yeah, I yeah. thought I'd stick the glasses on if we're like going to do a discussion yeah. about apprenticeships. I think this looking. might be the first video that people see you in glasses. You look very intelligent. I can see why I wear them now. Yeah, very, yeah, good. very yeah. deceptive. Right, let's go back to the, the serious matter of apprenticeships. So yeah. on um, Facebook mostly, I get a lot of messages saying, how do I find an apprenticeship? Yeah. Great question. Yeah. Difficult to answer though, Joe. <sighs> Difficult but not impossible. We, uh, we actually enjoy a pretty good conversion rate here at the college yeah. uh, of our full-time learners into apprenticeships. Um, what do you think is, is kind of behind that, Gaz? Why do you think we get that? It's, it's work experience. Mm -hmm. So of course, if you've left school and attempted yep. to get an apprenticeship at being possibly 16, mm -hmm. uh, and you've been unsuccessful, and then you've gone down the college route, yeah. obviously you're trying to add those skills in from a college point of view, but of course still trying to gain a job. Yeah. And we've found the best way to do that at college is obviously to get meaningful work experience in the construction industry, preferably the electrical industry. Yep and then excel on the, and that's a hard bit, so let's just sort of clarify that moment there, excel on the actual work experience yeah, itself. Yeah, sort of, because rolling back for me, if I was an employer, I'd be looking at people who were leaving school, and I would not be looking at them and thinking they're ripe for employment. Mm. So don't be discouraged if, you, if you're leaving school and you can't find an apprenticeship. There's a few challenges with getting younger people actually physically on site, and we'll talk about that yeah. in a few moments. But also from an employer's point of view, I'd want to, to look at employing someone who'd actually shown some drive to excel in the field that they're going to be working in. So I'd be looking at people who had completed perhaps a year at college. Yeah. And if during that year at college they came to me for work experience, they came and worked for me for free, uh, for work experience, which is a, uh, a requirement now for uh, most courses. Yeah, I think. absolutely, uh, yeah. And we move towards to, T-levels even yeah, more so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, you, need, you do need to do work experience. And if someone came to me and worked really, really hard on their work experience, when they weren't getting paid, yeah. that would, to me, suggest that this is someone who properly wants to get involved in this industry. So take it a step back, how to get work experience. <laughs> so, 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 so we had, I want an apprenticeship, and yeah. now I've got to get work experience. So even if you're at school, mm. I think there is still a requirement for school um, students to actually do work experience. But if there isn't, you've still got holidays, yep. you know, February, Easter, some yep. holidays, etc. And you've, you've got to sort out your work experience. So let's, let's deal with how we're going to get work experience then, uh, if we think that's going to be a really good route mm -hmm. to get an apprenticeship. It, is a letter any good in a phone call, Joe? It's a good start, but it is just a start. What you want to be doing is you want to send a letter and then don't sit back and go, well, I've sent a letter. They never replied to me. They never got back to me because chances are you're trying to contact very busy people yeah. who are trying to run a business in, in quite a challenging industry at times. So you then need to follow up the letter or the email with a phone call. Okay. And then perhaps another phone call and then perhaps go and knock on the door of the company and introduce yourself. And you know, there's, you're, you're not going to get a work experience or an apprenticeship Friendship. just by sending making contact once, no. it's so, so very unlikely. And I'm a massive fan, and I, I like your route, but I'm a massive fan of turning up mm. at the business you're applying for an apprenticeship yep. or work experience yep. for a number of reasons. You've had to get to that location, mm -hmm. you've had to walk through mm -hmm. the door, and you've had to maybe present them with this letter that you've produced. I always yep. like a photograph in there as well, yep. so, so they can remember who what the person walked through the door, make sure you attach a photograph. And it's that, oh, Look at the effort they've already gone to. Yeah, yeah. They've physically turned up, they've found us, they've spoke nicely at the front desk, they've offered us a letter, yeah. maybe then followed it up with a, a, an email, a yeah. phone call, etc. Yeah. But of course, everyone's watching this going to go, yeah, well, I I've tried that. When I'm 15 or 16 and still at school, they'll turn around and say, well, you can't work on a building site, mm. Joe. So how's that going to work? So if they say that, and they may well, and there may well be restrictions in the places that they're working on, uh, their insurance may put restrictions on the age range of people who can work in their environments uh, on site. However, at that point, that's your next opportunity to show that A, you're willing to graft, yeah. and that B, you're not gonna be put off by problems, because again, a lot of employers are looking for problem solvers, aren't they? People who are looking to overcome challenges, not back down as soon as things become difficult. So if they say that to you, sorry, you can't come and do that for us because you're not allowed on site at your age, what can I do to help out off-site? Can I come in and, and, you know, sort of do some admin work in the office? Yeah. 
can I come in and I will sweep out the workshop, I will clean the van, I will get materials together ready in the morning put on the van. You know, don't be put off by the fact that you can't go on site because there's so much work that takes place before and after yeah. you're on site. And that's the stuff you can be volunteering for. And it may well be you, you get knocked back again. They may say that that's not possible. Oh. <laughs> but what an effort you've put in. And that person who you're applying to for your work experience or your apprenticeship, they're going to keep you in mind, aren't they? If someone's come to you with that kind of attitude and they've sort of come to you with that kind of desire to work and desire to, to go into the industry that you're aiming for, then you're going to stick in their mind, don't you, you guys? You, you certainly are. And doing all that, and getting really prepared, smartly dressed, whether you be male or female, yeah. turning up with that letter, yeah, etc. Yep. And we'll come back to the female bit in a second, is that okay? Yeah, I was just going to say, just one small tip, because often uh, when people go for interview at, for uh, manual jobs, yep. for physical jobs, they often, they often say to me, I don't know if you get the same thing, um, I, don't, I don't know what to wear. My advice is always dress smart, so always go shirt, tie and trousers, yep. but take in a bag, a change of clothes, in case they want you to do some kind of work as a trial there and then. Yep. And I, I used to do that when I went for interview. I was used to, to have a change of clothes just in case. And equally, a female to dress smartly or equivalent yep. clothes that you just described yeah. there. So we, we, we're not suggesting yeah, one no, way or the no. other. But you do all of that, so you think, hang on a minute, I've listened to Gary and Joe, I'm going to give that a go. So I've, I've, I've identified one company, yep. I've wrote a lovely letter and put a picture on it, I've walked through the door bravely, smartly mm -hmm. dressed, I've done the chat on the desk, I've handed it over, I've suggested I'll do absolutely anything for that company, and they royally say no. Mm -hmm. Do I give up? No, absolutely not. Because you're going to have to do that maybe 50 times. Yes. If it's the 50th time that you, you actually get a sniff of work yeah. experience or an apprenticeship, you had 49 attempts mm -hmm. at preparing yourself yeah. for the one attempt yeah. that was immensely important. And if you keep getting knocked back, always ask why. So if they say to you, no, sorry, we can't accommodate that right now, ask why. Because if it's something that you can change, if it's something in your approach or something about the way you've presented yourself or, or even just the timing of it, yeah. get feedback because then you can apply that to the next one and then get feedback and apply that to the next one and actually what you'll find then is that you get better and better and more confident at presenting yourself in front of people for those positions. And people will say, but I don't want to do that. Then, then you won't get an apprenticeship, maybe that way. Yeah, you know I mean? I, and, and that's another, and there is other ways, yeah. but you've got to look at every single opportunity. I'm a great, great one for, and no one's really going to try this one. I would have done. I'm the great one in finding out where your nearest electrical wholesaler mm -hmm. is. And if you're at school, choose a half term. If you're at college, choose maybe a day that you've got a day available at college, or again, wait for a half term. Mm -hmm. Turn up with a, with a chair, flask of tea, packet of sandwiches, and a little sign that says, I don't maybe, need... Maybe a parent in a car nearby <laughs> yeah. as well if you're a minor. <laughs> <laughs> it's so practical. <laughs> but saying, little, little sign saying, with all your letters, pile yeah. of letters outside the electrical wholesalers saying, I don't need food, I certainly don't need a drink, I yeah. just need an opportunity. Now, I'm a great believer in if you do that, I think the electrical wholesaler, especially if it's a cold part of the year, will ask you to come in and sit inside there. If you're in an electrical wholesalers, everyone who work, walks through the door is yeah. connected to the electrical industry. Yeah. You can offer and pass them your letter. You can have that miniature conversation with them every time. Yeah. It's got that full connection. Maybe then that's something that maybe a, a work experience in electrical wholesalers might be one that gets you that opportunity with your pile of letters, yeah. etc. Or if you're at school, maybe they work a Saturday morning, you can go and sweep them out. And again, have all that contact with the electrical yeah. um, uh, yeah. electricians in the industry. It's so, a good way of trying to get work experience and or apprenticeship yep. one don't generally listen to absolutely other. and we've so far we haven't mentioned sort of a couple of other ways yep. where you can start looking into apprenticeships uh, what's the the sort of the big website that we should be interested in if we're looking for apprenticeship skills would that be apprenticeships.co.uk very very close it's oh. apprenticeships.gov.uk oh, <laughs> that close <laughs> Um, and that we'll put a link uh, in the description below for you to uh, to click on there and go and have a look. Again, it's so visual. Apart from I can't remember the name, it's so visual that every every person will be clicking on that. Yeah. And if anyone advertises for an electrical apprenticeship and or other apprenticeship on yeah. there that you're interested in, the likelihood is there'd be a big uptake. Mm. But remember, someone's got to get it. Yeah. So again, it's not an avenue that we wouldn't look at. Yeah. 
That, that's interesting, isn't it? Because that goes back. Um, people sometimes ask how we got into the electrical industry, didn't they? Yeah, they do. And it just so happens <laughs> that we recently recorded a post- podcast for Electrium, yeah. uh, which you can find on their website, and actually describes our roots, uh, respectively, into yeah. industry. But the, the overarching theme of that was the two very different ways that we got into industry, yep. wasn't it? Absolutely. The way that we got our apprenticeship. So, so you got yours? I got mine uh, because of someone that my dad knew. And you got yours? Because 15 of the 100 people applied for the same four jobs. And you got one of them. One of the four, yeah, yeah jobs. So again, listen to the podcast and you'll get a little bit more detail. It's that not giving up thing yeah. that got me my apprenticeship. Yeah. I think if I'd have given yeah. up at the first stage, yeah, and that's, that's the thing. You can't you can't just use one avenue to try and get into industry. If you uh, cast your net wide by going through as many different avenues as you can, if you only go to the website, you're minimising your chances. If you only do one other thing, yeah. you're minimising your chances. Yeah. So again, look around your family, see who's in your family, see if they've got any links to industry. If are they getting some electrical work done in their house yeah. that electricians coming in to do. So, and just, just make the most of those connections as well. Absolutely, yeah. So, th- th- our story, I'll see if I can put it in the description, maybe the podcast yeah. thing. If I can get it yeah. dropped in now, I'll drop it in there. It, it, I think it's worth a listen. It's yeah. interesting how we both got into the industry and where we've ended up now. So, so there's a couple of opportunities, but there's other ways. And you'll see your local college, wherever you're watching this from, your mm. local college have a banner outside saying apprenticeships. Yeah. Uh, I, mm, be careful here, but it, that can sometimes be mildly misleading, but it's an opportunity to go in and speak to their apprenticeship team. Yeah. I would suggest if you're not connected to that college initially because you're maybe applying for a full-time mm. course, you've got to remember there might be many learners actually at the college already that are looking for apprenticeships and they generally like to offer the opportunities the colleges get, yeah. normally first of all to their own learners, yeah. don't they? Yeah. So again, if you come into a college and you take on a, a full-time course, mm. there is a chance that we can find you jobs, yeah. but I think it is a little bit misleading that the apprenticeship sign sometimes on the outside of these colleges as if they're going to get you a job. That's still not the case, is it, Joe? There's no guarantee. No, there isn't. There's no guarantee, I think that's the thing to remember. But when you when you go to a college, certainly most colleges will have a team or a couple of people whose job it is to try and make contact with yeah. work placements and with work experience. We're, we're very, very blessed oh, here at the college. We've got a great guy yeah. who uh, New to here. works brilliant, really, really, really hard to make sure. And, and Again, we're seeing yep. the benefits of that very much. Did Jacob not just pick one up the other week? He did, yeah. You know, and just when you look back at our full time group, you look at the the number of uh, students from that who have managed to go from even before they finished their full time course, yep. they've managed to transfer to an apprenticeship, um, and we've managed to accommodate um, a start this year for them as well. They've not yep. even had to wait until the first academic year is up. So, okay, how would you describe? the learners that got the apprenticeships through the time when they started their course and now they're onto the apprenticeship framework. So I'm talking about Josh, I'm talking about um, Freddie, etc. Yeah. So describe those students to me. Proactive, yeah. for one thing, mature, yeah. uh, punctual, and their attendance levels were very, very good. I mean, I think when Josh first arrived, we kind of, we knew, so we knew straight away that he wouldn't be on the full-time <laughs> course for long. Yeah. We knew he was gonna get an apprenticeship because he just had the qualities that that potential employer is looking for. So again, let's link that back to the apprenticeships. Uh, if you come to a, a college because you haven't got an apprenticeship, mm. and we're going to be asked, aren't we? As lecturers up and down the country, we're going to be asked to be referees mm. for these jobs. So everything you do for your college lecturer will yeah. also be a massive bonus once you get that opportunity, because we, we have to be truthful. If yeah. your attendance is 84%, yeah. We have to say in the paper when we give it back, your yeah. attendance is 84%. You yeah. know, it's a really nice person. I'd just like to make that clear to any potential uh, students coming on our courses, that's not an acceptable <laughs> level of attendance. Just in case you're looking at that and going, oh, wow, <laughs> 84%, that's fantastic. He must have been here nearly all the time. Uh, that's not good enough, I'm uh, afraid. We're not looking for that. Uh, that's, a, that's a private conversation off camera, I would suggest uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll be having on that one. So, so all these pieces start all linking together, don't they? Uh, we, we've got a national website. We've yeah. also got brokers that you yeah. can apply for and do a skills test, and, yeah. and they sometimes can push you forward for jobs. Again, I think it can occasionally be a little bit misleading, but JTL, yeah, 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 yeah. JTL, again, if you look them up, uh, I've often put it on my uh, Facebook page, but again, they, they, they broker for companies, mm. don't they? Companies will come to them and say, this year we need X number of apprentices, and they tend to take you for a skills test, yeah. colorblind test, et cetera, yeah. and then sort of thin you out before interview. Yeah, okay, so that's yeah. another opportunity. Mm. I'm not suggesting everybody who applies is gonna get a job, 
that it's another yeah. minor opportunity it. to get yourself into the industry. And again, it's another branch that you can go. Okay, so let's just, just pull that back in because we're in the middle of a, a really serious point there. So th that JTL gives you a minor opportunity, yeah. walking through the front door of a business that you don't know, but you've mm -hmm. done some research on, gives you a minor opportunity. National Apprentice website gives you yeah. a minor opportunity, yeah. and then you, 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 your family and friends, yeah. your connections, all of these together yeah. could eventually lead to a successful Yeah, because each, each one of those is giving you a small chance. Yeah. And when you combine all of those together, when you try all those different avenues, you're maximising your chances, yeah. you're increasing your opportunities, um, and you may well be one of the ones who manages to, to land themselves an apprenticeship. Yeah, not that big businesses aren't. Last year, RS Components took three of our learners. We yeah. got Anglian Water and all the rest of them. You've still got to look for those big blue chip companies that yeah, yeah. are nationally advertising in areas, yeah. whether it be the Midlands, etc., the yeah. Southern. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're going to take on apprenticeships. Again, there'll be a huge number of applicants, yeah. but somebody would get that job. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, we, definitely. We, 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 don't, we don't rule anything out in any of these sections, do we? No, 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 no. So, is uh, anything else you want to add on that? No, I think we've we've covered everything really. We're we're very very happy because we've got our apprentices back now, uh, and we're thoroughly enjoying getting them through their apprenticeships, teaching yeah. them how to be electricians. Uh, that's been a real yeah. joy for us, hasn't it? Getting those lads back. Haven't had them for for five, five, six years. Six, easily yeah. six years that we haven't had them. So we, we've got those back in fold now. So of course even more so from our point of view, every single full-time learner, which yeah. has been our, our, our bread and butter for a long time, that gets an apprenticeship and actually comes back to us now, yeah. doesn't it? We actually yeah. get to see the journey through, yeah, which, which is, is quite is great. nice. You know, so again, you know, we, we keep talking about Josh, but what a, what a great kind of thing that is that we get to actually continue his yeah. his experience and uh, you know watch him develop from you know full-time learner to qualified electrician. So from my point of view, Jay, the year before, Jay's now on, on yep. that, yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, that, especially when you ask a question out there and you know you taught me the year before and you say, why do you know that? Because you taught me last year, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, so let's just do that in summary. Um, I'd love to be able to tell you exactly how to get in an apprenticeship. Yep. I think we can offer advice. Yep. So whether that be cold calling with a lovely letter, mm -hmm. sitting close to a electrical wholesalers maybe where mm -hmm. a lot of electricians come in, looking at the websites, yep. looking for blue chip companies mm -hmm. with jobs, using your local college, mm -hmm offering work experience, yep. and then ultimately trying to get yourself that apprenticeship. Yep. Failing that, join a college course, yep. and continue yep. to push on. That's it, and don't don't assume you'll get an apprenticeship and put off applying for your full-time course. No. Apply for your full-time course and keep on looking for an apprenticeship, uh, because that way you've got that fall back in place. Um, and we say that to our learners when they come, you should be trying really hard to get an apprenticeship. If that doesn't work out, then join us in September. Absolutely. But make sure you put your applications and stuff in long, long before the course is due to start. And everybody out there, you know, listen to the podcast, you see how difficult it was yeah. for me to get my apprenticeship. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah. you had to, but it's that good luck, keep trying. Yeah. If you really, really want to do it, I, I don't see any reason why it won't happen for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you put all the effort in, whether you be male or female. Yeah. So, we're going to end it. Should we end it? Yeah. We, we hope, hope this video has been some help. help.